But my mental health was so much more worth what I was bringing in. So we, you know, we had to change the way we lived. I was used to just being able to do what I want, go where I want, buy what I want. And I really thought about that. Like, okay, we're gonna take a step back, you know, maybe go down to one car or, you know, not take all the trips that we were doing. So it, it, was, it was a process. Scary? Oh. So, so scary. You typically can find something that you don't hate. Yeah. You might not love it, yeah. but so I try to make it fun. That's really what I'm about. She's 78 years old, and for probably three months, she would just open the door, not happy to see me at all, like miserable, <laughs> really. <laughs> like, I don't want to exercise, I don't want to yeah. do anything. Now, she wants me two times a week, and important in all the research. I follow Harvard Health, and for probably three months, she would just open the door, not happy to see me at all, like miserable, <laughs> really. <laughs> like, I don't want to exercise. So I try to um, make it so, yes, it is about the physical, but it's a little bit about the mental too. Like you said, that, that mindset shift. You know, one of the biggest thing I say is, you know, I want to empower my clients regardless of their age, their size, their fitness level, whatever it is, their ability. Um, it's, it's about showing what you can do. And it's always people surprise themselves. And welcome to the Apex Lifestyles Podcast. I'm your host, Bob G. DMD, and I'm here as always with my co-host. Des V, how are you today, Bob? You know, I'm fantastic. Big day? Big, big day. You know, we keep bringing people in more and more, deeper and deeper into the Rolodex, so to speak, right? Oh, this is this this goes deep in the Rolodex. This is a great one today. Yeah, you know. Really excited. So we're, um, we just launched our challenge, right? It's a worldwide challenge, yes, sir. and it's a transformation challenge, and the winner gets a $25,000 makeover by me and my team, and um, you know, it's kicking off on you know, less than 24 hours. Yeah, yeah, right? That's and, totally go time with right, that. It's go time with that. So you know, the guest that we have in today is totally apropos to that, and you guys have known each other for a long time. Yeah, it's my pleasure today uh, to have Cindy Sullivan on the show. Cindy uh, is why we both graduated from Anna Maria College. I won't say who's older or who's younger, but we went to Anna Maria College together. And uh, it's been amazing watching Cindy. Cindy, corporate America, to now midlife and senior fitness specialist, personal trainer, group fitness instructor. From Millbury to Boston to Chicago, right here in the studio today. Welcome, Sydney. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Coming. Thanks. Glad to be here. Yeah. It's great to have you. Uh, corporate America to fitness. How Oh, gosh, Dennis. <laughs> Big question there. Well, I mean, if you really want me to start, I was at Anna Maria back with you and wasn't really sure what I was going to do. I graduated 1992. Um, it was the time when um, we were in a little bit of a financial crisis. Um, I actually started at the FDIC, was my first job, and we were out closing down banks in New England. So I quickly, I started in the file room and was quickly taken on the road to live in hotels, work with um, people who were from all over the country. So I got exposed really quickly to a lot of different people and different personalities, and I got to see um, the levels in, in a corporate environment really quickly. And it kind of encouraged me to say, I want this, I want to work hard, I want to be successful. Um, I did that for a few years, and then I had the opportunity to go to Chicago, and that's when things really changed. I started working for J.P. Morgan, and I got more into the um, event planning side and was working with the high net worth group individuals, the private clients. And that exposed another completely different world that I had never experienced. So at that point, I was traveling around the globe in private jets sometimes, um, planning events. And it was, it was really fascinating, but the work got really difficult. I was working, you know, 60 to 80 hours a week. And both my husband and I were like, okay, we need to figure this out. This was a little bit much, but we decided to come back to Boston. And at that time, I took a job with a dot-com. 
So I thought I was going to be taking a little bit of a step back, but instead it went even more intense. So um, from there, I continued to um, climb that corporate ladder and ended up as the director, senior director of corporate communications. Um, and it was just getting out of control. I realized year after year, I thought this was what I was supposed to be doing. Um, on the side, I had a baby. I was traveling all the time. I was working all the time. And I just kind of came to that moment in life where I was like, is this what I really want? Is it, you know, this is what everyone told me I should want. Yeah, that's a big that's a big thing. I mean, I definitely can totally relate, right? I lived the first, I guess, 20 years of my career living what I thought everybody else wanted me to do. Yes. Right? And uh and hence now, you know, I'm a podcast host and author and all sorts of other things, but totally relate to that. I think a lot of people can, for sure. So what was the um what was the nidus that actually got you to think about that? Well, I, I struggled to have my daughter, put it that way. So we were back in Boston. I was working, you know, traveling, working, um, trying to get pregnant, and it took many years. So I struggled with infertility. I struggled with a couple other issues in life. So I was trying to, like, hold it all together. Um, I, I did ultimately have my daughter, Holly, who's 20 now. Um, but my husband was starting a company at the same time that I was giving birth. So <laughs> I had to go back to work. There was no question that I could be a stay-at-home mom at the time. So I went back. Um, luckily for us, like his company took off and um, he was very, became successful. I continued. I was trying to have a second baby. Um, and that ultimately did not happen for us. I think that was kind of where I really started questioning, like, what am I doing? Is this something I want to continue doing? Um, and it got to the point where I was just completely unhappy, and I recognized that. Um, I had always been in health and fitness. Well, I should, I should take a step back. I was in health and fitness when I was younger. In college, not so much younger 20s not so much I started to get back into it a little bit so um, I was taking a lot of fitness classes group classes I loved the gym I loved running and um, I was in probably my mid to late 30s and um, you know Ed and I my husband Dennis went to college with my husband Ed as well um, we just we had a conversation about it and we just decided like I'm going to start you know, teaching some classes or do some things on the side, a little bit more for me. And gradually, I started to wind down a little bit and really had to think about what I was going to do next and what I was really passionate about. And um, that's kind of how I started getting that mindset shift that, okay, I'm not going to spend the rest of my life doing something that I'm miserable in, I need to make that jump now and do it for myself. So I, you know, I went back, I got certified, I did all the things that I needed to do to make the transition. I started teaching classes, and I can go into all of that, depending yeah, on how, sure. <laughs> like how that yeah. transition happens. Yeah, but sure. yeah, you know, I really like that because I've been an educator for many years, even at the college that uh, we both went to. And one of the things I tell students is you really have to look in the mirror each day and decide what's making you happy. Right. If you're going to work and you're miserable going to where you were going, you're, you're not passionate about what you're doing anymore, you really have to, you have to be in the right mindset to be happy. And it sounds like you made that transition to something that makes you happy, fulfilling, and you're, you're killing it. So Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, and it definitely did not come easy, put it that way. So to transition from a corporate America job that, um, you know, came with a lot of financial benefits as well to completely leave that and recreating yourself and starting over you had to really think about do you want to take that risk or do you want to make those changes so it's not something you can just jump into most most people can't just jump into that um, so there there were definitely behind the scenes a lot of things going on to make that happen I had to really think about how we were going to change our lifestyle um, we were used to my salary. I did pretty well for myself at the time. and um, But my mental health was so much 
more worth what I was bringing in. So we, you know, we had to change the way we lived. I was used to just being able to do what I want, go where I want, buy what I want. And I really thought about that, like, uh, okay, we're going to take a step back, you know, maybe go down to one car or, you know, not take all the trips that we were doing. So it, it was, it was a process. Scary. Oh, so, so scary. Uh, I mean, that, that's the biggest thing. I mean, I basically changed my career fully at 40 years old to become a fitness professional. Who does that, right? At yeah. 40 years old? I mean, think about, you know, well, you guys are both into the fitness and you yeah. look amazing and congratulations on everything you've been doing because you so you're, you're so you. inspirational. And that's, that's what I love about it. It's so fulfilling. So um, I really had to fight that imposter syndrome. Like I went back, you know, I, I, I kind of have been told that I have a type A personality. So everything I do has to be the absolute best. So I didn't just I go out. I know nothing about that. <laughs> really? Yeah. Living, breathing, yeah. type A. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's probably why we relate so well. Absolutely. But I, um, you know, I couldn't just go teach a class. I had to find a mentor and follow her around Boston. And I ended up um, getting really lucky. And my mentor... Um, her name's Josie Gardner, and she's in her 70s now, but she was one of the um, founders of the Reebok Step. Oh, uh, nice. She created yeah. that. That's very uh, cool. She was part of that program with Reebok. She also created um, Zumba Gold. So that's the oh, wow. over 50 version yeah. of Zumba. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. So she's really highly regarded, um, works for Harvard, has a lot of research papers and things like that. So I asked her one day, I'm like, Josie, can I follow you around Boston and start taking your classes? So I would just go with her and sit in the back and like take notes and everything. So um, I got my group fitness certification first and I started taking or teaching classes um, as a substitute teacher around Boston. And um, Josie actually had me sub a over 50 class one day. And I fell in love, not just about teaching that type of class, but the people who were in the class, they were so motivating to me. And I really loved hearing their stories and loved how, I guess, they were so supportive of me being a new instructor, but also them changing their own lives was so inspirational for me and seeing what a difference fitness and health and wellness and well-being and all that was was so impactful for more the the midlife and older population so that is kind of where I decided to start getting a little more focused and went to um, the Functional Aging Institute and ended up getting certified there focused on senior fitness a little bit more so fitness for older adults I got certified in that I get certified in sunrise yoga um, I got my, you know, personal training certification. And fortunately, um, when you do all that, and I'm certified by the American Council on Exercise and the Athletic Fitness Association of America, um, they, they put you in a database. And I was found in the database from an organization called Beacon Hill Village, which is a group in Boston. They're the first village, and now there's 20... It started 25 years ago, this village movement that is to help um, older adults age at home. So I am their fitness coordinator, and I teach all their classes. And that was something that happened over 10 years ago, and that has really transformed everything for me. I mean, the people I meet with the village, now these villages are across the country, yeah. and, and Boston was the first one, and they're really remarkable. And the people, so I, I have just been ingrained in a lot of these people's lives, and they, you know, I was teaching their classes, and more and more people kept asking me to come into their homes and start training them individually. So that was about, I'd say, 10 or 11 years ago, I became a personal trainer. So as things developed, um, I never really marketed myself. It was all word of mouth. And I started doing in-home training. And that was all in Beacon Hill and Back Bay and all over Boston. And the more people I trained, the more people were talking about me and the yeah. more clients I would get. So that's kind of the evolution of how, how it built. And prior to COVID, I had four trainers working for me who would go out to people's homes in Brookline and Belmont and all over Boston. Um, 
when COVID hit, things shut down a little bit, but another, I guess, evolution happened. We all went on Zoom yeah. and my, bil- my business exploded at the time because of Zoom. Zoom right. Now everyone's stuck at home and we're working out online. So I was now teaching people across the country and the globe, actually. <laughs> I, yeah. I had clients overseas. Um, I taught a class in Oregon for four years. It was pretty funny. Cool. I, 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 I still, to this cool. day, have clients I've never met in real life. I've only worked out with online. online. So That's yeah, fantastic. Yeah. So. so you're changing lives, and, and you're able to take what you've learned and, and – you know, exponentially, like send that out. That's amazing. Yeah, I love that. That's um, you know, that's impact, right? At the end of the day, that's why Dennis and I are doing what we're doing, trying to create impact. Um, and uh, I think that's awesome. So right on message for us, you know. Oh, great. Um, tell us about a little bit. Do you have any clients that you come to mind that have made like big headway, right? Like made huge transformations. And can you tell us about? them like tell their story maybe you don't have to tell, say their name because you know you have oh, yeah. permission of that but tell their story and then and uh how did how did you end up getting that pulling that out of them you know yeah every story is so individualized right so fitness is very personal and the reason why you get into it is very personal as well um i always like to say unfortunately it is something we all need to think about and do and i guess not unfortunately it's not unfortunate, not unfortunate. Yeah. It's unfortunate that people don't realize that. It's almost like paying a bill. Like, you don't want to do it, but you have to do it. It is fitness. Like, nowadays, all the research suggests you do need to move your body. So my goal is to make it more accessible and make it easy. So you don't have to think about it as this, like, all or nothing. I got to go to the gym for an hour a day. I got to do this. You can kind of incorporate these little movements throughout your day. It's really about consistency more than anything. The longer I'm doing this, the more I realize it's about consistency. And being able to come every day Mm -hmm. and not just so the mindset that i had prior to my transformation was i'm gonna go and fix this tomorrow because i'm a type right yeah so like i would go and kill it so bad that i would be dead for like two weeks and then fall off again yes Um, i hear that a lot instead you know like i've learned to just leave a little on the table yes each time and just build on that you know and that's been kind of the key to my success yes no and it's a process so I have a lot of clients who have to go through that process I have clients who have never done anything in their life and their doctor all of a sudden is saying like I'm not going to give you a prescription but you have to exercise your prescription is to exercise that's actually happening right now which I'm thrilled about that's amazing and I'm wondering why medicine has been so reluctant to use that or like to actually say that's your prescription yeah, I think it's starting to happen, yeah. and believe it or not, I mean, I think social media has been a, a help with that a little bit right. because people reasons. people yeah. are seeing that a little more online. Um, but one client that comes to mind, um, she started with me in her late fifties, and um, you know she was in corporate America as well. She's a CFO of a few companies in Boston, and her goal for turning 60 was to climb the French Alps. Now that's, 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 a, pre- a, <laughs> that's a pretty goal. big goal, that's, right? That's, that's what we call a BHAG. Yes, you know, the, yes. The big, hairy, audacious goal, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. I haven't heard that one before. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. but yeah, so, um, you know, I started That's train- actually Andy, Ro- uh, that's uh, Tony Robbins, not me. Okay. So, yeah. anyway. uh, that's embarrassing that I don't know. I should know that one. Mel Robbins is the one I'm following most yeah, yeah, these yeah. days. Um, but yeah, she's so from here too, by the way. Mel Robbins is from 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 Massachusetts. Massachusetts? Yeah, really. Absolutely. Yeah, <gasps> I know she's on Nantucket a lot. Yeah, she's from Massachusetts. Yeah, yeah. that's so cool. <laughs> anyway, cool. Um, but yeah, so my client, um, I started working with, and you know, it was a, it's a once a week thing with her. Like she'll see me once a week, but then she's doing her own things on the other days of the week. So we had to kind of come up with a very specific program for her. Um, but I have other clients who have come to me, I have a a client in her 50s as well, her daughter hired me for her as a holiday gift. And we have become fast friends and her goals really are just to strengthen, but the texts I get on a weekly basis are just, to me, the reason why I do this and I love this so much. Um, Her recent story is she, she sent me a text saying, Cindy, you're not going to believe this. I've never in my life been able to carry my 25-pound bag of cat food up the stairs. And she lives on Beacon Street in Boston. 
and another client being able to move a giant plant. I mean, it's not always about the aesthetic. It's about like feeling good and like that mental health piece. Um, I have another client who's 86. I've, I've been with her for 10 years and she lost her husband, unfortunately, a couple of years ago. She had been married 60 years. She, honestly, she has changed my life because of the way I view aging now. She is planning her second trip in the last year to go to Paris by herself. She can hold a two-minute plank, like longer wow. than half of my 40-year-old, 50-year-old friends. So two-minute year old plank friends. is like, it seems like a century. Uh, like, yes, yeah, for sure. a 30-second plank. It's the <laughs> longest two minutes of your life, right? Yes, yeah. yes. And she's constantly challenging me like, Cindy, this isn't hard enough. This is, you know, yeah. with her, her abs, you know. So it's a, it's a fine line, you know, you want to make sure you're not going to push someone beyond what they're capable of doing, yeah. but making sure that they're in that sweet spot of actually making the gains. And yeah. so, yeah, I have I've, um, I've so many examples, of, and I've worked with hundreds of people at this point, so it's really, really fulfilling. That I can imagine so, right? Us doing our challenges is very fulfilling as well, like, you know, so I, I totally get that. Yeah. yeah. Well, to be part of seeing somebody, I mean, you're giving back, you're helping people find their mindset, develop their mindset, you mentioned social media real quick. Mm -hmm. You know, when you started, I mean, there, there was social media, but not to the level it is today. How has that been a game changer? Because you have a great social media presence. How has that helped change what you're doing or enhance what you're doing, get your message out there? Yes. So it's interesting. So, um, Dennis, I'm 53 and I am older than you, so I'm not afraid to admit it. So I'm not embarrassed. Of, I'm not embarrassed <laughs> about the the aging process. Um, but I do have to say being on social media for me has been a little challenging and I have to shift my own mindset being on there because, you know, a lot of people might think some things I post are a little cringe, but the feedback... Hey, it's only the kids younger than you. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. Uh, but the feedback I get from people all over the world, like I've become really good friends, and this is kind of name dropping, but um, Princess Diana's, former Princess Diana's um, trainer and in in london in south africa and all through social media and it's it's been a game changer for me because i personally i i'm an independent um i have my own business so i don't work for a gym so i'm kind of a little bit of an island so the social media stuff has really helped me connect with other um, fitness professionals but also with people who are looking for change and don't necessarily know where to start so I try to post in in my my social media presence is all about trying to help people understand again that they don't have to do everything at once you can incorporate these small movements throughout your day and I call that the move more mindset that it's called um, exercise snacking so I like to post things about what you can do maybe while you're boiling water how many squats you can do while you know, the water's boiling and you're at your sink or, you know, balance becomes a really huge thing. You're probably not there yet with it. But at the same time, it's it's heartbreaking to me to see how some people age that are not doing the right or things that they could be doing for their body to make things a little bit easier. So just knowing that that um, those type of exercises are out there. So I could read you messages that I have from people just today from a, a video I posted yesterday about, you know, doing my 10 favorite arm exercises at home. And it's all about at home. That's the other thing with me. I love the gym. I was a gym rat forever. But um, now at my age, I don't love it as much anymore. And I just want people to know their options. You don't have to go to the gym. You can do a lot of this stuff at home. We have really, you have really good engagement, which means people are watching it. Yes. And people are trying it. What are some, because this is Apex Lifestyles helping, you're talking about everybody reaching their individual apex, and it looks like you were at your apex in corporate America, then you shifted, you're reaching your apex in this side, in the fitness, and now you're working with others, helping them find their apex. What's most challenging about that? Huh, good question, Dennis. Yeah, I started off with the softball. So yeah, the real yeah, now. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. I was thinking about this a little bit, and what if I have actually 
reached my apex i almost feel like and you might be able to answer this like is there only one i mean does there have to be one can, I mean, yeah, I feel I, like I don't think there is. I yeah. think I think you know when you get to the top of one hill, right? Yes. And you look out on the horizon, there may be another one you want to go climb. At least that's what happened with me. Yes. You know. Yeah. And um, and it keeps happening. I think that's just kind of like goal setting. Yes. At the end of the day. Yeah. Right? I mean, and that that is, you know, my in, my clients who I I do have clients who are in their twenties. I have thirty year old clients, fifties. I have a ninety six year old client who wow. is making. A major life change right now he finally he's he's lived alone independent um, he's moving to an assisted living and um, I was seeing him multiple times a week and it's, it's heartbreaking to to leave him but also knowing that he's going into this um, place that has a lot of fitness and a lot of things so I'm hoping he still has another apex to me at, at his age you yeah. know so <laughs> no, absolutely you could have answered it better and that's the thing is along the way you're helping people set small goals, mm-hmm. long-term goals. And like you said, when you hit your goals, when you train, I, I think about when you transitioned into fitness and all of a sudden you knew you didn't have all the answers mm-hmm. and you followed somebody that was doing it, mm-hmm. emulating some of those things, developing what you're doing, you're putting your plan together. Yes. I don't know if it's, you know, I do think about this a little bit. I think the older we get, the easier it is not to care about what other people think. I mean, it yeah. still creeps in to me. You know, I still, to this day, might have that imposter syndrome, you know, in my, I've, even though I've been doing this now for 13 years. I think one of the things that um, strikes me when we're talking is that um, you're helping people who may not have ever moved, you know, as, mm-hmm. as an adult. How do you get their mindset Right, like for me, that's the the um, when I went through doing what I did over the past you know five or six years, like getting my mindset right, and I didn't really have anybody, you know, in my in my general vicinity to help me do that. So I kind of went and got it myself, and then I ended up with a community around me um, that we've talked. Dennis and I have talked about quite a bit. But um, how do you help people find their why? right the why is is it right and and for me it was like when the pain of inaction was greater than the pain of action right that's when i decided to make change how do you help inspire change in others well it's twofold really because some people come to me because they know they have to do something or been told they have to do something um I can typically tell right away whether they're in it or they're not in it yet. And my goal is to try to get them fully in if they're not. And if they are, I want to meet them where they are and then kind of figure out what their needs and goals are. So every single person's needs and goals are different as well. Someone might come to me and say, I want to lose all this weight. But really, they might need to be strength training or just start walking. You know, so it kind of... You want to give them what they are looking for, but you also kind of know what they might need and help guide them that way. So that's kind of one way that I do that. Also, I want people to know that you don't have to necessarily do things you hate. You know, there's a lot of trainers out there that are like, okay, we're going to do these burpees and we're going to do this and that. I mean, there, there are so many exercises you can do for each muscle group. You typically can find something that you don't hate. You might not love it, but so I try to make it fun. That's really what I'm about. I want people when they see me, maybe at least be happy to see me a little bit. And I typically can win people over in that respect. Um, a lot of times I'll get hired by adult children for their parents. So, you know, I, I have one individual right now who I've been with for about a year and a half. She's 78 years old. And for probably three months, she would just open the door, not happy to see me at all, like miserable, (laughs) really. (laughs) Like, I don't want to exercise. I don't want to do anything. Now she wants me two times a week and we've become friends. So I try to, um, make it so yes it is about the physical but it's a little bit about the mental too like you said that that mindset shift so i mean going there's a big piece that i i would love to talk about too with the older population or older adults and that is you know 
I, I consider there's like five steps to um, successful aging or longevity. And of course, fitness for me is number one. So, but it's not just fitness, it's just moving more. So taking away that inactivity piece or just that sedentary lifestyle, you want to be able to move. So to be able to do something, and the guidelines are 150 minutes a week, which equates to 30 minutes a day. So you want to be moving your body like 30 minutes a day, but that just means you could walk in 10 minute increments yep. is enough to make change. So it's it's not a huge amount of movement, but just kind of incorporating that. And then strength training two to three days a week is really important in all the research. I follow Harvard Health. Um, you know, it's Yes, it's coming from Cindy Sullivan Fitness, but I'm not making this up. It's all research backed. So it's really about that, the movement piece, the nutrition piece, which is a, another huge piece. I find like yeah, a lot do, of- Do you get into that with your clients? I am not a nutritionist or dietitian. I mean, yeah. I, I definitely guide people in that way. Um, it's really important these days too, the protein is coming out, you know, everyone's yeah. talking about protein. Yeah. So really making sure you're hitting those goals. Um, but that nutrition piece, I go into a lot of um, clients' homes that maybe are eating because they're nervous to cook or nervous this, and they're eating all these frozen dinners and thinking yeah. they're getting the right nutrition, and they're not, unfortunately. So it's that nutrition piece that's it's, it's important as well. Um, the other ones are, you know, making sure your acuity, cognitive, staying sharp. You know, we all have heard about the crossword puzzles and that as you age. But the two that are really important – that I think that we forget is um, this social isolation. There's a lot of that going on these days, like making sure you're staying connected to people. That is really important. And I find that fitness can kind of play into that a little bit where- 100%. Uh, yeah, so you're yeah, making connections sure. at the gym or I'm making connections with people that I'm introducing them to other people to like start walking groups or have partners in fitness or something. So. Um, unfortunately, I do think that is a big challenge right now, this, this like little bit of social isolation. But the, the last one is also really important in its um, passionate pursuits. So like this podcast, for instance, you know, yeah, it's yeah. like something you're really passionate about. Um, I feel like people who have that I've experienced who are aging successfully are really or have something other than you know, family, friends, but they're they're interested in or starting to take piano lessons at 80 years old or going to theater or symphony or just, you know, meeting for coffee a couple times a week or, you know, anything with traveling, whatever it is, but to have something that you're interested in, volunteering, there's so many. Those are the people I see who are aging most successfully. You have purpose in your life. Yes, yes. You have to have purpose. Right. That's That's... Tremendous. Yeah. The uh, educate. I've been in education for thirty years, and I know I can be the best teacher in the world, but nothing happens. And I've worked with at-risk populations. I've worked with a variety of students, but it doesn't matter where they're at. The education doesn't begin until you build a connection. Mm -hmm. How do you build your connections? Yes. Yes. Good question, Dennis. <laughs> Because like I said, you know, some people are ready and hire me right off the bat and they're they're ready to go. Some people I have to kind of win over, I guess, pull, lack of a, pull, pull, pull. yes, yes. Um, so yeah, I just really out of encouragement, I'm not that no pain, no gain kind of trainer at all. Um, I want people to feel empowered. You know, one of the biggest thing I say is, you know, I want to empower my clients regardless of their age, their size, their fitness level, whatever it is, their ability. Um, it's, it's about showing what you can do. And it's always people surprise themselves. Yeah, so I, I, I have a woman who is so afraid to go above three pounds. Wait, she's in her 50s. Mm -hmm. She, she, she can, thinks she's going to bulk up and become yes, a, yes. a bodybuilder. So there's yeah. a lot of myths out there. Yeah. So it's kind of like breaking those myths and just reminding yeah. you, you know, it, it is great to be able to afford someone like me to come into your homes privately. But there's a lot of resources out there. And that's why I do have a YouTube channel that I, I need to focus a little bit more on. But I do post free workouts and free videos out there. And like you mentioned, my social media is 
Cindy Sullivan Fitness. I guess I'm considered a micro influencer because I keep getting offered these brand deals. That's great. Else. It's kind of funny. Um, and, and I am embracing it. I never um, promote anything that I don't 1000% believe in myself or don't use myself. But yeah, it's just making sure that I'm trying to connect at their level, meet them where they are at and where they're ready, um, and then just kind of go from there. That's fantastic. I mean, that's at the end of the day. That's that's how you you make impact and change for mm-hmm. people. You have to make the connection and then meet them where they're at and then bring them along the way. Exactly. And um, that that's just an amazing thing. Um, I think for me, I always look at you know when you're looking at your apex and what you want to do in life, right? I start with the body and the mind will follow, and I think that's really important, right? Because you can you can affect you know your body. Right, but yeah. it's really hard to affect your own mind, right? And then the mind will just get in line if yeah. you get the, the body right. So, with that, how many? Um, how do you get um, someone in their fifties, right, who wants to go and in, in, uh, climb the Alps? How do you get them to climb the Alps? <laughs> So I really – Or that, actually 70s, I guess, right? No, she was, she was turning – it was for her 60th birthday. That, that was – Yes, right, yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. No, we, we, we kind of set up a plan. You know, I usually come up with um, a, a month, one month, three month, six month, year plan. So for something like that, that's, that's pretty extreme. Yeah. So um, – but really making sure we're building stamina, endurance, um, obviously – climbing and hiking has a lot to do with leg strength so we're really focused on the leg strength piece you know just focusing on those but you also arm strength being able to get up and down being able to grab on things so it's a total body core um yeah just coming up with what where she needed to focus on we really needed to work on the leg strength so we were doing a lot of squatting a lot of step ups you know a lot of lunging Um, But trying to make it fun, too. I like to break things down into very um, foundational movements. Um, The biggest thing, as we get a little bit older, too, we really need to make sure our joint health is okay because, you know, that can affect a lot of the movements. You don't want to injure yourself. So injury prevention, you don't want to do, you know, we talk about progressive overload. Mm. If you're looking to build strength or bulk up like you mentioned before um so for that strategy it was all about maintaining and building the leg strength and making sure the stamina endurance was there yeah yeah and uh how long did it take her to get to uh her goal yeah it took like a year we we did a year planning for that one that and and that that should you probably it depends where you start at right so and did she do any acclimate like acclimatization training or anything like that yeah so as it got closer she started doing smaller hikes mostly in new england she did a couple out um, west like near the grand canyon in some of the national parks so every few months we kind of checked in making sure the equipment was right we worked out with her hiking boots on a couple times i live in beacon hill so there's a lot of steep hills there so we did some training up and down the hills with the backpack and everything so very cool yeah very cool so what's the what's the uh, future for uh uh cindy fitness (laughs) yes cindy sullivan (laughs) yeah yeah you know i am at a little bit of a crossroads my daughter is 20 she'll be graduating from college next year um we're trying to decide if we stay in the city Um, my husband and i have lived in chicago and boston like i mentioned for our entire adult life so 30 plus years um, we did just buy a place in Cape Cod in Katamit that has an amazing outdoor um, garage that has the perfect spot for a fitness studio up above. I've got a couple quotes, so I'm actually thinking of building that out down there. Um, but I, I've, I've done um, now working with a few publications like NPR and Market Watch as their senior fitness um, coordinator and specialist in a couple magazines I'm a contributor of. I've done a couple speaking engagements here and there. So kind of sharing that message a little bit more. I'm I'm worked with um, the Nantucket Council on Aging and there's a television television show on Nantucket um, with me teaching a few days a week. Um, I love doing that. So I'm kind of You know, love my private clients, love my group classes, but seeing what that next phase is going to be. I'm in that big transition period right now. Um, I 
I can't really decide <laughs> what to do. Yeah. I <laughs> so think- I, a lot of coaches, and I personally don't call myself a coach as much. Um, I don't know why. It's it's something in my head. Like I, I see myself as um, a personal trainer or group fitness instructor or specialist in that area. Um, I, I know people call me coach all the time, but I'm, I am trying to decide whether to take my business online. I know I could reach more people online, but I do really love that one-on-one being in front of someone. So that hybrid apro- approach is working a little more for me these days. Um, yeah, I actually don't know. So Yeah, that's, yeah. that's all okay not to know. I guess, you know, as you walk down the path, the, uh, the, the path will reveal itself as you go. Yes, right? yes. What would you tell someone who wants to make a jump from one career to another, and they're afraid to do it, or they're they're not they're kind of on the fence. What advice would you give them to to make that jump? Yeah, something that keeps coming up over and over is I and I never realized this probably until the last like five years or so that most people don't know what the hell they're doing yeah. <laughs> in life. Yeah. Really, I mean, yep. you just got to do it. You know, for something as um, big as a career jump. You know, you want to do your research. You want to make sure you're financially secure that you're able to do something like that. You know, fortunately, I was in that position that I could do that. Um, So, but really, you know, take a chance on yourself. I love, there's so much out there now. I mean, that that's the greatest thing. Like you can just Google anything these days and just try to figure out, emulate someone else, find yeah. someone who, like I did, I was lucky enough to have an actual mentor that I could follow. But online these you days. Virtual mentors, yeah. For absolutely. Sure. Yeah. yeah. My husband and I were just talking about um, he has a business coach and he runs a successful mortgage company. He still has a coach that coaches him all the time. You know, I, I'm looking for I I did have one when I did a rebrand last year year. Um, I need to do that for myself right now to figure out what I want to do next. Um, but yeah, I, I I also love working out with trainers who train me because I feel like yeah. you're always learning from someone yeah, yeah, else, right? 100%. So, yeah. yeah, 100%. You know, when I looked at all the titles and everything you're accomplishing, if I wrap you up, changing lives. <laughs> and you're helping people change your lives every day. And you're like the epitome of what this is about. Apex lifestyles, not only yourself, but helping others reach your apex through whether it's something, a, a pursuit, a passion, a purpose, or uh, just reaching a certain goal in life. You're doing that every day, and you kudos to you. It's oh, incredible. thank you, Dan. You both are as well. I mean, this is fabulous. I love it. Uh, we're, we're trying. Yeah. <laughs> one, one, one episode at a time, right? <laughs> Um, so how can everyone li- list out how people can touch get in touch with you? We'll put it in the liner notes at the uh, at the end of the uh, the, the episode. Um, but yeah, why don't you let everyone know how they can uh, reach out and, and connect with you? Yes, um, Cindy Sullivan Fitness. I didn't come up with a better name. I'm sorry for my business. <laughs> when I first started, I thought it was great because um, people could easily find me that way in Boston. Um, it expanded a little more. I keep playing around with different names, but it's essentially... Google Cindy Sullivan Fitness, and I'm out there on Instagram, Facebook. Um, my website's out there. I have a, a YouTube page, like I mentioned. Um, but it's Cindy Sullivan Fitness uh, at gmail.com or just the website. Right on. And uh, yeah, I follow you on Instagram, and uh, I know Dennis does too. So um, uh, you have some really a plethora of cool little reels there to, yeah. to teach people some things. It's uh, <laughs> kind of like some free content out there if you yeah. follow her. Um, so give her a follow and um, and learn something and, and maybe get a little bit, especially for our, uh, our older adults, right? Um, so that they can get out there and, and start moving a little bit and living, living a better life. Um, but man, you've been a, a great guest. Thank you. And, um, and I hope that this episode kind of inspires some some older adults to uh, start moving. Well, and make sure you yeah. start young because yes. everything, yeah, I mean, sure. it's so much easier if you're starting now. Yep, for sure. Yes. That's true. Yes. True message, right? Yes. Dennis. Absolute pleasure having you. We met years ago and I'm glad that we reconnect and uh, see that you're reaching your goals, your dreams, and as I said, you're, you're a life changer. So keep trying, grind it, whatever that pursuit is you do next, you're going to do it, do it well. So thanks again for coming. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. And Dennis. It's go time. It's go time. <laughs>